Noah, Noah Loomis. Noah, are you ready for this? Yeah? So Noah, tell us what your life was like before Christ. Uh, I grew up in a Christian home where my parents taught me good and sound doctrine and were faithful to have us involved in church. Because of my dad's job in the military when I was younger, he was gone on deployments and we had to move often. I struggled with anger and a strong desire to have my own way. Acts 751 says, You stiff necked people, uncircumcised in hearts and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. I often found myself in conflict with my mom, doing just as the Pharisees did in Acts, yelling and covering my ears, not wanting to hear the truth because I wanted to obey me and me alone. I realized I needed a change in middle school, but my motivation was primarily to please others, especially my dad, or as my dad started being home more. So despite appearing as a well-behaved kid on the outside, I was still battling anger and selfishness inside. So here you are growing up in a gospel-centered home, exposed to the gospel, but yet uh, rebellious towards it. So what did Christ do to draw you to himself? For a long time, I saw going to church as a chore, and I would frequently argue with my parents about attending, even when my friends were there. I particularly remember a t my time in Texas when these arguments were quite common. Growing up, I always heard the gospel, but never truly understood what it meant to be saved from my sin. As Ephesians 2, 1 says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins. And in verses 8 and 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Because Jesus lived a perfect life, died on the cross, then rose three days later, defeating the power of sin and death, his perfect righteousness covers my sin. I can't pinpoint the exact moment, but I know that the Lord has saved me sometime after I moved to California about three years ago. And after that time, as it says in Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what it is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. God began to work in my heart, renewing me, changing my desires from wanting to obey only myself to wanting to obey and please my Creator and Savior. So that's awesome. You saw your need for a Savior. You saw the goodness and love of Christ through His sacrifice, and you've received Him as Lord and Savior, repented of your sins. What's your life like been since then? Now that God has transformed my desires, I genuinely want to serve in the church any way I can. Whether that involves setting up and tearing down, serving in the college group, or as a grunt for junior high camp, VBS, or adventure club, along with children's ministry, parking, and being willing to help wherever there is a need. I am incredibly thankful that God has changed my heart, allowing me to dive deeper into studying His Word and eagerly serving His people. 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, So whatever you eat or drink, do or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. This is a verse I now strive to live by, and I can only do it because the Lord has changed my heart and gives me the strength daily to follow Him. Amen. Can you guys give Noah a round of applause? No?